right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the IoT track. We have an awesome speaker next, actually one of the smartest guys I know, and I met him decades ago when I was at my first startup, he was at his second startup. He, uh, he was brilliant back then, he went on to become the CTO of Sign Microsystems, and now he is the uh, venture partner at New Enterprise Associates. His name is very complicated, but his thoughts are powerful and simple. Oh, Please welcome Greg Papadopoulos. Uh, when, when asked to, to speak here, actually, on IoT, there was a certain amount of deja vu for me. Um, for people who know me, uh, you know, sort of this topic of what, how are we going to look at the, the growth of the things that connect to the network, and what is that going to look like over, over decades is one of my... Uh, uh, one of the themes that I, I, I keep looking at as organizing what's going on in the world. And, uh, and I went back, actually, at TyCon, I gave a talk exactly 15 years ago. Um, and uh, this was, I pulled a slide from that talk, because the talk was on IoT uh, as, as a piece of it. Um, and and just, just sort of to, to calibrate you, 2001, we were sort of in the left-hand side of this, which was, you know, we had a few hundred million things connected to, to the network. And, um, and just at, at, at uh, Sun Microsystems, for all my friends there, you know, in the middle of getting Java phones and everything uh, uh, connected to this network, kind of staring into this, what would a billion devices look like, or 10 billion devices look like? And those are things that embed computers. And then, you know, there's this trillion thing out there that, uh, you know, of, of the Internet of Things. Um, and, and that's what we're staring at now. But look, I, I, that sounds like, oh, wow, I really could see the future. Actually, it's really easy to predict this stuff, you know, that it's going to happen. The really hard part is Alan Kay will remind us all is, is when it will happen, right? So there's something very special now, and we all feel it, and such the energy around here in the industry that this is, this is a special time that things are lining up to do, do that. So here's what I'd like to do in this, you know, 30 minute segment here is to start with sort of a way, sort of a, a very big picture view of the way that I think of what IoT is really accomplishing. And there's a hint to that in, in the title of the talk, which is Connecting Bits and Atoms. So we'll talk about that. Uh, but then what I really want to focus in on is what are these implications of scale? What, you know, going to trillions of something and how does that sort of change, you know, it looks like what we have today, but, but uh, different. And in the process, because now I'm in the, the business of spending other people's money, is uh, look at it from an investment and a, and a value point of view. So um, let's start with that big view. And that big view is a, it's a very Nicholas Negroponte view of the world, right? It's, it's that we have the world of atoms, um, which, uh, uh, you know, we all live within, and, uh, and then there's the world of bits, which is that, you know, most everyone in here has had a hand in helping create and populate, um, you know, the world, the world of bits, right, the, the digital world. And computing stuff connects this, right? So that's all the hardware we build, you know, with processors and memory and storage and networking, but, you know, they sort of support the fiction, which is the digital abstraction, and, and then, you know, and, and it's sort of embedded and infused in the world we live in. It sounds a little science fiction, but it is, right? We're creating this. This is, where historians will look back on this era and say, we were the generations that built the world of bits. And um, you can ask a question, and this is, the, I think, the really important when question about IoT, is how well connected these worlds really are. Okay, how much, how well does the world of bits actually reflect the world that we live in, right? And how operational is that? And I think historically, um, it's actually been pretty poor. Right, that it's it's been very thin sort of conduits in of you know how do you populate up you know you type at keyboards or you take mouse clicks or you know, you get out that we see into the world of uh, bits through displays. Maybe we're going to see through augmented reality, right? Uh, but uh, you know historically, um, 
the, 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 there wasn't a lot to do with each other. Look, the person who, who, who had the best visual for this, and also, um, you know, in the, in the late 90s for, did I lose the uh, sound? You got it, okay. Is, uh, was Paul Sappho. And Paul used to talk about, look how, you know, this is when he was talking about the world of sensors. Like, if you're sitting there typing on your keyboard and a meteorite comes and takes you out, the computer doesn't, right? Computer doesn't know, it's waiting for another keystroke. It will wait a long time, right? It doesn't know that something really bad just happened, right? And uh, yeah, press any key. So what is happening now is, is uh, well, you know, okay, so that the things that embed computers, right, have also come along not only getting the computing cheap, they've done two really important things. I think the most important thing here is the network that, that we've built to go support these. That's the magical part. Um, actually, don't get me going, but like these are pretty lousy devices otherwise. <laughs> have small displays, my fingers don't fit on the screen. But the other thing that they've done is uh, you know, create, open up this world of sensing uh, very inexpensively. And that was actually, that would have been very hard to predict even 15 years ago that we could get the kinds of things like, uh, you know, inertial sensing and all the, the, the enormous world of, of vision now. Okay, and if you're gonna remember one thing about what's happening now and what's very special now, we're teaching computers to see. And, and sort of image processing and image understanding. Well, guess what? Our world is awash in photons and taking pictures give you a lot of information and that's gonna be hugely important and it's cheap, right? And, you're gonna, and we're gonna be doing a lot of computing on it. So it's, it's safe to say that um, these, this world is, there's, we're starting to couple this, these worlds together much uh, uh, more significantly, right? That, that there's a lot of awareness, it's big data, it's however you wanna look at this. But the, the objective is, or an objective, is that what you get to do with all this stuff is actually start to build models, constructs, in the, in the world of bits about what's the world happening in the world in, of atoms. And why is that helpful? Why do you care? Well, because you know you can you can run a whole lot of different scenarios, right? There's only one future we actually get to run, um, you know, in in the left hand side. But on the right hand side, we can run a, a bunch of different futures and try to predict things. And you know, we know all of that. We can try to predict whether somebody wants to buy something, which is interesting. Um, but there are far more interesting things, maybe that that you may want to do. By the way, and I want to break a functional fixedness right now. Because the way it looks and the way in the era that we're in, you might think, oh, that's you know, the networking stuff, you know, the devices on the left, and that's the cloud on the right. And I don't mean the cloud. Yes, the cloud supports bits too, right? But so do all the devices, and this is a completely infused, distributed, intertwined idea. Bits are everywhere, atoms are everywhere, okay? So hold that thought, because it's gonna be important for the last slide. The other thing that you can do, and this is where I think uh, you know, some extra value gets to happen, is when we get to close the loop, right? It's, it's not just sensing being uh, there, but it's affecting as well, right? And essentially being able to, uh, if you want to, is to take apart uh, systems in the world of atoms and take their control and management plane out and project them over in a bit. So that's, this is the most abstract as I'm gonna get, okay? Um, but but that's, that's at least how I'm thinking about it. So let's go back to look at some of the implications of scale. So going from tens of billions of things to tens of trillions of things, three decimal orders of magnitude of stuff, right? What are the issues? So, um, you know, we look at, and in, in from an investment side now, looking at this is, is trying to sort of, you know, grok like, well, okay, um, this is gonna happen. What things are fundamental? What changes? How do you, how do you really see yourself uh, through to this? And so here's, here's a list of things that for me are, are top of mind. And I'm gonna spend um, some time on the first two of these. Okay, and then, you know, depending on how time, time is going here to uh, touch on a few of the, of the other ones, okay? But, but um, there is something important, and again, this is the, you know, the part of um, investing in this, is that, you know, it, it's in the context of, well, so what's valuable? 
All right, and if you're even if you're coming from a social side, uh, you know things that have value also tend to be fairly good reflectors on, on um, uh, things that are important to to some some aspect of some aspects of society. So one simple model, and this is one from uh, um, I credit to Forrest Basket. A very simple observation is that if you want to look at those places where IoT you want to go first, is look for the places where there's this highest capital density, right? So, so Forrest puts it as, think about dollars per cubic meter, right? And, and where are those dense? So you know, it, it certainly starts to lead you into industrial kind of thinking. There's a, you know, a fab there, or there's you know, uh, movement of, of goods, or warehouses, or however you want to think about it. Um, another observation is, guess what? The, the fabs, which is probably the densest capital thing on the planet right now in terms of uh, that kind of value, uh, there has been IoT there forever, right? Those are very well instrumented, understood. Anybody who's done, you know, uh, process control or statistics, that's, that's, that's part of the art form of, of that. Uh, so there, there is actually even a, a way of thinking about it or examples of thinking about it. But there are other things, right? I mean, there, there, there's manufacturing. We're in California, right? That's valuable stuff. What do you want to know about it, right? What can you say about it? And then there are things that are just priceless, right? And, you, and so it's in these areas that we think about what's this, what, what benefits do we get out of accurately reflecting these into the world of bits, being able to make predictions, and feeding those back into action we take in, in our world, OK? And in there is also a, a sub-theme that I'm, I'm really not going to come back to, but I want to emphasize because you can see that we think a lot about these as IIoT, right, or industrial applications or health applications where there is tangible value. Another part of this is that quality matters. How well, it's not, you know, you want to put a soil moisture probe into a grape vineyard, you want to measure it well, right? And, and it's not, this isn't, you know, so, so actually really good, yes, we have the inexpensive sensors, we can do a bunch of things uh, with, but quality will matter. Okay, so as I said, let's look at these, you know, at scale, kind of in these high value applications, energy. So the thing, thing is, um, trillion is a really big number. So this is fun with big numbers, all right? And if you multiply a big number times a, even a small number, you tend to get big numbers. <laughs> that's, that's our math for today, <laughs> right? Okay, so here's one. You know, okay, we got batteries. Now, let alone, you know, trillions of batteries, and I'm gonna take out the environmental implications of this, but just the physics of, at a trillion, I'm not talking, you know, okay, a trillion, five-year battery life, that's generous, right? Um, we'll be generous here. Uh, but you know, half a billion battery replacements a day. So at 10 trillion, that's five billion. Mm -hmm. You know, that don't work, right? So so there's a yeah, there's a, there's a fundamental thing here that we have to figure out um, energy in a way that. Uh, um, actually lets us build devices which are sustainable. And another way to think about it is that the, the IoT, right, the time constants there are more like the time constants of the infrastructure that you're instrumenting, right? They kind of have to, you, you, you can't rip out things every three years and put in something new generally, right? You, you, uh, uh, you have to live with the life cycle of these things. So this is, um, you know, uh, certainly led us to believe that uh, energy harvesting in ultra low power systems, basically microwatt level systems, um, are are going to be demanded, and uh, um, and people can look at we we have one of our uh, one of the companies I'm involved with, uh, Sidekick, there doing full SOCs, you know, in the 10 microwatt range, and just you know power off of body heat or incidental solar or, or what is it? So that so that's one that's one area. And I think um, there's a whole ecosystem that goes around this. By the way, this does touch the networking challenges that are going to be at that next layer up of hooking trillions of things up in very energy uh, conscious ways. You know, here's another implication of a trillion. 
a trillion ways times a small number of how badly things can go wrong um, means things can suck pretty bad, right? If you don't get it right. So you know, even something like very high quality four nines, uh, you know, firmware update on on a trillion devices, we just bricked a hundred million of them, right? And um, so you you think about actually you know, hundreds of millions of variants because these trillions of things are built out of things that maybe we make a few thousand of, maybe we make a few million of, whatever they are, but, you know, there will be hundreds of millions of different designs at different builds, you know, builds and, and generations and all kinds of things. And how do you keep track of that? And how do you deal with that? That is not the problem we have today. We haven't solved this problem yet, right? Because we're still sitting there. You're still accepting software updates, right, <laughs> on your on your phones, and you know, right, things that are buried inside buildings or you know under the ground aren't accepting software updates. But you know, if if the consequences of getting that software update wrong, you know, brick your vineyard, right? That's not that's not cool. Right? So, uh, um, you know, actually we think operating systems matter again, that, you know, paying attention to, again, this is a very high quality, kind of high reliability uh, environment. I'll say a little bit more about that. Um, another one of the uh, activities involved with these, the runtime fight folks out of uh, Silver Spring Networks doing some really interesting things. Um, so what I did want to do is just, you know, take, uh, take some time to just, uh, uh, maybe opine a little bit on um, you know some of these other challenges. Uh, the one that I want to actually you 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 be surprised that I'm not so enthusiastic about is the next one, the analytics and modeling. And uh, because I'll I'll tell you that what I hear a lot of uh, of people uh, pitching their companies, um, there's a big mode of folks that will come in and go, hey we. We know we can do these analytics on you know, these uh, people's infrastructure and devices that have been instrumented, and we're going to tell you things about you know, consumer behavior that will help you predict the next best feature to add, or where you could sell your next thing, or understanding um, the world. Now, I think there are a lot of very high value applications in here, don't get me wrong. Uh, things like preventative, uh, predictive maintenance is, is one, uh, and industrial monitoring, I think, is, is particularly high. What I, what, however, I don't think there are really durable, horizontal kind of uh, uh, platforms there that you make money at, because what's happening for us collectively, if you look at machine learning, you look at AI, and sort of the collection of that, we're all learning how to do that, and we're teaching each other how to do that, and that's just going to be part of what we do. And so being able to extract value from it is really more vertical and in connecting that into industry. So I'll, I'll say that that third point is really about the importance of domain expertise. That when you're, when you're connecting over into that world of, of bits and you're building your models and you're trying to figure out what you want to do, that connection there is you want to know a lot, a lot about that. Um, connectivity. So this is the networking piece. I said that there's a, there is a projection here of the, uh, you know, the, um, the energy problem, but there's also the challenge of uh, you know, a thousand fold uh, growth in the number of things that are connected. Um, I am almost certain that adds another layer in our view of networking, right? That what we think of as access points like Wi-Fi access points or LTE access points in the wireless sense, um, or even LoRa or um, you know uh, any of the long-range wireless technologies, uh, there'll be another layer below that of 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 hub, if you will, that will do sub-IP connectivity to all of the the devices that are around, and maybe those devices mesh with each other, um, maybe maybe the hubs mess, mesh with each other. For people who are into this stuff, I'll just put it in a side. It's hard for me, peer-to-peer -peer communication at the device level is actually not very energy friendly. And so, um, you know, it may be a hub-spoke model, but I'm, I'm easily and likely to be wrong about that. But I'm, I'm fairly certain there's going to be another layer of networking that we're, we're really yet to, to evolve and discover. You know, the security and trust one, I think, is is uh, more than fundamental. 
You know, and I think we feel that, we all feel sort of at the edges that, well, we better, this stuff better not get hacked, right? Because it will, the problem is, of course, the temptation is, is that it is the maximum surface area, right? From a security point of view, it's your entry into this, into this world. Um, I'm very focused in looking at people who are really reasoning fundamentally about this. And a lot of that stuff has to do with authentication as, as sort of the root term. Um, uh, location, uh, location is uh, for me in this trillion device area an unsolved problem and the person who solves it will build the next great uh, enterprise. Um, it's an unsolved problem in that what we, what we have solved is uh, location for things that embed computers, right, with GPS satellites and sort of in those energy profiles and uh, that kind of uh, footprint. Um, we haven't solved that at the next la layer down when you really have very little energy to work with and you may not be able to see the sky or if you do, you're not gonna sit around and wait for satellites and um, I think there, there's a lot uh, to be had there. And then of course, broadly speaking, novel sensors and actuators, right? Anything that increases that coupling in new and interesting ways that either you know, reduce the cost of things like LiDAR or you know, uh, gives you, I'm waiting for you know, a real mode that I think is uh, a very, going to be a very important one that will augment vision is smell, right? And, you know, sort of chemical nose, you know, electronic noses and the like, I think are, are you know, are, are going to be huge. Okay, so um, let me just sort of uh, uh, end with uh, a note of caution here too, is that, uh, you know, I hear a lot of this wishful thinking, that which, which goes in, I wish this too, <laughs> when I'm doing things like this. Look at, wow, 10 cents. If I could get, if I invented something really cool here, and I could get 10 cents royalty per device. You know, this is the small number times a big number is still a big number, right? Then I make $100 billion a year. And, <laughs> but, you know, the, the reality is that what we're really talking about is kind of ultimate commodities here as well. Right? And the, the IoT is going to have that feeling for it that where 10 cents is like a huge tax to go put on, on devices. It's not a little tax, it's a gigantic tax. And, um, and so as you, you reason through this, um, uh, you know, you, you do come back to when I was talking about the analytics and modeling, it's about really probably more vertical connection into real problems and being able to say things that, you know, get you in the entire uh, prediction loop where, where a lot of things will happen, uh, people will make money, or you do something really fundamental, all right? So that's, that's sort of the, that's the bar. I do think everything at the base is gonna be all open source, and we're gonna go build, you know, I hope, at least, let's get it, let's get it right at least this time. Okay, so with all of that, and I couldn't help myself, I had, well, if, if I'm invited back in 15 years, <laughs> to give a talk, God's willing, right? Um, you know, what, uh, I, I tried to pick a slide from my future deck, right? So where, where, what will we be thinking about and where will things go, be going? And, um, and I, I think that uh, we, we'll, we'll actually get rid of this idea of that there are discrete electronic things in the world. Um, that the, you know, what should I ask you to not get functionally fixed on a cloud versus, you know, world thing, but the atoms and bits completely intertwined. That the, the thing that you, you I, I can really imagine, and you certainly see this with uh, the way additive manufacturing is going and self-assembly, that as I'm building stuff, I'm going to weave in its electronic consciousness. I'm gonna weave in its, its bits. Um, and so I don't think it's discrete. I think that it's continuous and it's, you know, however we advance in, in materials in this side and self-awareness and that of the material itself. And I know that sounds like, wow, this guy is really, <laughs> did we legalize something here yet before, you know, but no, <laughs> right? That the other scale problem you have is who actually remembers Right, like I built a building out of all my smart materials, right? All the beams kind of, you know, are know about in the pipes and the wires and everything smart. Who remembers their relationship to one another and what makes sense and how does that build the model? The only way I can get through that puzzle in a scalable way is that you, the devices actually kind of have to know their, their function, right? That, that, you know, I'm a beam, therefore I 
support, right? And this is what I tell my neighbors about what I know about myself and, and how I do that. And, and other systems will be able to tap into that and, and, uh, and build larger, uh, larger views of the world. But that's, uh, uh, that's, the, that's the fantasy. So um, I do hope I get to come back in 15 years <laughs> for a lot of reasons. OK, while we wait for energy harvesting to become viable, do you see uh, energy densities of lithium ion batteries rise to solve the problem. Um, actually, the, uh, um, that's, a, that's a great question. Can we rely on battery technology to, to uh, help us out with this? Um, you know, the, the, um, to get too down, far down in the weeds, yes. You know, we may be able to get from five years to 10 years. What you actually end up fighting with in these things is not about how much power you pull off the battery, but the self-discharge rate of of, uh, of these things. The other part that it, you know, I find objectionable is that like, those battery chemistries are like environmentally, they really suck. Right? And, um, and, and, I, and I don't think we can go like, start sticking batteries underground and you know, in people and all that stuff. I, ju I, just, don't, I just don't see that um, uh, ultimately test, being test the answer. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.